locations of various cartilages hyaline cartilage most common cartilage most of the bones of the body develop from hyaline cartilage endochondral ossification sites of hyaline cartilage articular cartilage of the joints keep the ends of bone smooth for smooth movements of synovial joints costal cartilage anterior ends of ribs nose larynx trachea and bronchus articular cartilage of the joints are intraarticular they do not have any perichondrium hence if these cartilages are damaged like in osteoarthritis repair is very minimal epiglottis is an elastic cartilage not hyaline cartilage fibrocartilage it works as a shock absorber sites of fibrocartilage knee menisci pubic symphysis intervertebral joint articular disc of sternoclavicular joint articular disc of temporomandibular joint elastic cartilage sites of elastic cartilage mnemonic triple e external ear eustachian tube epiglottis next topic is lymphoid tissue primary lymphoid organs they are involved in lymphopoiesis formation of lymphocytes they have stem cells they are thymus red bone marrow thymus trains the stem cells as t lymphocytes and these t lymphocytes provide cell mediated immunity stem cells in the red bone marrow forms the b lymphocytes and migrate towards secondary lymphoid organs these b lymphocytes change into plasma cells these plasma cells form the antibodies that provide the humoral immunity or antibody mediated immunity stem cells are formed in the bone marrow but are later transformed into thymus as well presence of stem cells is the factor to qualify the lymphoid organs as a primary lymphoid organ secondary lymphoid organs they do not have stem cells they have the b and t lymphocytes to mount the immune response they are lymph nodes tonsils spleen mucosa associated lymphoid tissue in small intestine pears patches in the mucosa of terminal epithelium appendix capsule subcapsular sinus trabecular lymphatics gc lymphoid follicle the blue dots here represents the lymphocytes the lymphocytes appear blue because they have large nucleus and it occupies almost all the cytoplasm afferent lymphatic vesicles bring the lymphatic fluid into lymph node this lymph is collected in the subcapsular membrane from the subcapsular sinus lymph moves into cortex and then the paracortex and finally reaches the medulla medulla is slightly lighter staining and have the medullary sinus through the medulla lymph moves into the hilum of lymph node and passes out through the afferent lymphatic vessel blood vessels are coming into the lymph nodes through the hilum and reach until the paracortex where they divide to form high endothelial venules there is some leakage of lymphocytes from high endothelial venules the t lymphocytes will stay in the paracortex and b lymphocytes move to the cortex the b lymphocytes move into the lymphatic nodules or lymphatic follicles in the cortex and form plasma cell there later these b lymphocytes and plasma cells migrate towards medulla therefore the medullary lymphoid sinuses are filled with lymph b lymphocytes plasma cells and some macrophages main topics main highlights of the topic afferent lymphatic follicles bring the lymphatic fluid into the lymph node this lymph is collected in subcapsular sinus from subcapsular sinus lymph moves into cortex and then paracortex and finally reaches medulla medulla is slightly